Hello, and welcome to the 60 for 30 project. My name is Xander Miller with Konosha Public Library, and I'm sitting here with Tom Rizzo. How are you doing, Tom? Doing well, doing well. Um, interesting uh, little project you got going here. I'm looking forward to seeing if I can help you out in any way. All right, with that, we'll just get right to it. Thanks for coming in here. So, um, what, what area of Kenosha are you from, or what area did you grow up in? Okay, I grew up uh, in the Columbus Park area. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was an old Italian area, which, which I am, obviously. A um, lot of great friends that I grew up with there. Uh, the, the church that I belong to, Mount Carmel Parish, um, lived right across the street from it. Um, and watched it, watched it be built one brick at a time back in 1963-64. Um, uh, Camozzi Construction, Turbasi uh, Construction at the time, who cleared the park, and, um, and then Camozzi built the church and the school. And uh, there was a restaurant right across the street from Columbus Park called Mary's Parkview Restaurant. That was my grandmother's restaurant. And um, I remember as a kid during the summer months, uh, we used to, I used, I used to go to my grandma's restaurant and bring the construction workers coffee and rolls. <laughs> and they used to give me, you know, a nickel or a dime tip, you know, and back then in the early 60s, that's a lot of money to a, to a young 10 year old or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, but it was fun. I had a great, um, a lot of great friends growing up in that neighborhood. Um, there's still some, uh, some um, people that live in that neighborhood that I grew up with, uh, but it's a, it's a changed neighborhood now, like mm -hmm. a lot of the neighborhoods in the, in the um, basically, I would say, inner city probably have. Um, but um, it was a lot, of, a lot of good memories in the Columbus Park area, a lot of good memories. And you still live in the Columbus Park area? No, no, no. Uh, now I live on the north side, um, okay. uh, far, far north side, right off Highway E. Um, so, <clears throat> so, Technically, I'm still a North Sider, I guess, because <laughs> that was considered North Side back back when I was young. Um, so um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Bradford graduate. Uh, went to McKinley. I went to St. Anthony's uh, Grade School, which is the, the church is still there, but the school is no longer in um, in in um, in use. Um, so I went there, and then for ninth grade, I went to McKinley Junior High School, and uh, then on to Bradford, and graduated from Bradford. Okay. Well. You know, you've been ra you've been raised here for all this time. You're still in Kenosha. And I'm curious, what is Kenosha's culture to you, or what have you experienced as Kenosha's culture? Well, again, you know, for me personally, uh, growing up um, in the city, um, it was it was very. Um, what's the word I want to look for? I don't want to say diverse, but even though it was diverse, I mean. Um, because we had, um, like I said, I lived in that Columbus Park area and there was a lot of Italian families in that area. Mm -hmm. um, and I could probably name a half a dozen right off the top of my head, but, um, um, but you know, I, I, then I, you know, I went to St. Anthony's and it was, um, you know, basically there wasn't any, any diversity in that school when I was going there. Um, then I went to McKinley. And at that time, for ninth grade, um, there was a lot of African American uh, uh, people that I met that I had never really intertwined with growing up because that just wasn't, you know, wasn't necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a good, good experience. Um, uh, became friends with uh, quite a few different uh, race people, and um, uh, and the same thing happened at Bradford then. A lot of good friends um, of different races, different ethnicities, um, whatever the case may be, um, all good experiences. So you know, if, you know, times have changed, as you would obviously know. That you know, we're talking back in the '60s uh, when there was, yeah, there was there was some racial tension in 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 the in the United States, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but Kenosha. Kenosha pretty well um, was a was a pretty good area to be in, and personally, I think it still is a very good area to be in. Um, uh, we didn't have a lot of headaches back then. Let's just say it say it that way, for instance. Um, uh, but um, you know, it is what it is. Um, uh, um, I had a good, uh, you know, I, I grew up. I had, an, I had one. I have one older sister. We grew up in a single parent parent um, family. Mm -hmm. um, 
so you know we dealt with a lot ourselves we weren't uh, we weren't um, privileged kids by any by any stretch of the imagination that's for sure uh, blue-collar family uh, my mom worked very hard to uh, to uh, take care of my sister and myself uh, our, our dad was alive at the time and he, he was you know he was in he was he was in Kenosha with us and we got to see him you know a few times a week whatever whatever the case may be but um, um, but you know they weren't they weren't they didn't stay again they didn't stay together so um, so it was it was you know back then divorce was a little bit uh, more of a taboo subject back then in the 60s mm-hmm. versus what it is unfortunately too common nowadays okay so um, it was a little rough as a young kid when you grew up um, not necessarily having that father figure in the house with you yeah. and uh, when all your friends are have both parents and stuff of that nature um, I mean I was fortunate to have both my parents alive needless to say and um, and had had no issues with either one of them but when they're not together and you're growing up in that type of a household it's a little more difficult mm-hmm. um, and um, so but we managed and um, you know I had a good childhood I had a lot of great friends growing up uh, through uh, through grade school through high school I was very very privileged from that standpoint to have a lot of great friends I was a football player in high school um, so from that standpoint um, you know sports bring a lot of different kids together and um, so that was a good experience as well okay so you've you've experienced you know you've experienced a lot of people coming together like diversity when it comes especially in sports because mm-hmm. they bring, yes. they were bringing people together and that was that was during the 60s right well okay it was the late 60s when I was in uh, um, um, junior high school and then I graduated I, I was at Bradford um, 69 through 72 so I graduated in 72 okay and um, um, but yeah I mean it was that era that you know that basically I grew up in that in that 60s era and then like I said was in high school by the time the early 70s um, um, from there yeah how is how is growing up amongst you know that's about civil rights era Mm -hmm. um, how has that affected your experiences in Kenosha I know you said there was some there was some tension but it was overall still good there was some tension when I was the one year that I was at uh, McKinley Junior High okay there was some tension then and it wasn't from the students that were in um, in McKinley Mm -hmm. it was um, McKinley was at, at that time McKinley Junior High School was the only junior high in Kenosha that had an open lunch hour so we we had approximately an hour and 20 minutes for lunch mm-hmm. um, back then and um, we would get some Bradford students that would come over that came over during some I would say probably uh, what's the I, I guess you could call a little bit of um, unrest at the time that was um, that was outside the city limits but you know you get you get you get a f- there's always going to be a few bad apples unfortunately and uh, McKinley at that particular time along with Lincoln um, uh, junior high school were you know were the two more diverse schools needless to say and um, but Lincoln had a closed hi- a closed lunch you know like I said McKinley was the only one that was open yeah. so we would get some unfortunately some some bad apples from Bradford High School at the time and came over and tried to create a few problems and I know there was a few fights uh, that took place because I witnessed witnessed them and um, and um, it never got to a point where it was totally out of control but there was a couple of days during those lunch hours that was a little little nerve-wracking um, and um, but you know I don't recall I don't recall police ever having to come although they probably did probably just to keep things calm and collective you know and Mm -hmm. uh, the teachers would come outside and um, you know usher us back into the building or whatever the case may be and um, uh, but it was it was a little like I said it was a little nerve-wracking because you just don't you don't want to get involved with it you don't want to get in the middle of it (laughs) Um, uh, you definitely don't want to get in the middle of it because you don't know what's going to happen and um, um, but we we managed to get through and um, um, and things kind of calmed down after. It was probably, I'm going to say, maybe a week or two's worth of, uh, of 
kids coming over from it was it was Bradford students we were told mm -hmm. um, and um, causing some headaches but um, but we managed we managed you know back then you managed things a little bit better than what some people get people can handle nowadays I don't know nowadays seems like it just takes one little uh, one little spill of water and somebody can really get nuts so mm -hmm. um, um, but um, now it, back then it was um, it was okay. It was okay. We managed. Yeah. So in comparison, what do you see nowadays that compares to, well, back, back then? Well, you know, the, 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 the obvious big difference nowadays is probably social media mm -hmm. and 24-hour and news cycles. And, you know, <laughs> you know whether, it's, whether it's Fox News or CNN or, or MSNBC or whatever the case may be, you have constant news cycles and you have constant social media, and um, back then you didn't have any of that. Uh, you had to be inside a building with a corded phone to make a phone call, okay? <laughs> yeah. um, now you can connect with anybody in a matter of seconds. So, um, so things didn't escalate back then like they do nowadays, and that's where, excuse me, that's probably where you get um, some of your biggest problems is because um, some guy called some other guy a, a bad name because he's seen his girl or whatever the case may be or some girl um, is not happy with a bunch of other girls because they're so-called bullying her um, some guy can't handle it um, you know so all it takes is that little bit of communication within seconds and you have you have issues okay and then next thing you know you have a group of whether it's young people, old people, middle-aged people, whatever the case may be, somebody takes something the wrong way or it gets blown out of proportion. And, um, and now, don't, get, don't misunderstand me. I mean, there are bad things that happen needlessly. I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything, but sometimes there are things that probably, back in my day, you know, okay, you know, <laughs> You, you, you had an argument or you push somebody in the shoulder and you walk away from it. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's, um, it's a, little bit, a little bit too rough sometimes. And, th and that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. You know, the, you know, the, the, um, the prevalence of guns nowadays. Now, personally, I have no issues with anybody, owning, anybody legally owning a gun. I have no issues with that whatsoever. No issues with uh, the Second Amendment. Um, unfortunately, there's too many guns on the street mm -hmm. that make that escalate things that just turn really de turn deadly. Unfortunately, I mean, look at you had a sad um, experience this past week in Kenosha where this young girl steals a car. She gets shot. She's 13 years old. Now the guy that shot her had a legal carry gun com uh, permit. He did. He was he was legally to ha won't have that gun. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he used it the wrong way. And um, you, you just can't do that, you know, you just can't shoot at a vehicle going away from you, or, you know, and, and, and that was sad. Now both of their lives are going to be changed forever. And, um, but I don't, wanna, I don't want anybody to come off and say, oh, Tom's against guns. Well, I'm, I'm not against guns. I'm against people that don't use guns legally. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm, that's my personal belief on that. So, so from that standpoint, um, it um, is a little unfortunate uh, that there are so many guns out on the streets nowadays. Um, and, and, and like I said, social media and the, all these news cycles, they escalate things a little bit too much. Um, and that does not bode well for the, the general public. Yeah. So what I'm, what I'm hearing is you know, part, of, part of an issue is, you know, first of all, a whole miscommunication as well as speed of communication. It just gets... Things that you know right. that might, that might be smaller get very big, and then you bring in you know how prevalent guns are, and then someone using that gun in illegal manners to even further escalate. Escalate. Mm -hmm. So, what would you see at, as helping change that just in our in the wow. community? Wow, that's a that's a big question. Okay, <laughs> and <laughs> I don't personally think I have the the the, the answers to that, but obviously. Obviously, um, you know, and, and gun, at, gun at activists, will, you know, 
they argue this, this point sometime, but here's the way I look at it. Okay. If you want to purchase a gun legally, mm -hmm. if you want to own a gun legally, I don't care if you have to go through 100 background checks. I don't care if you have to wait six months to purchase that gun. Mm -hmm. if, it, if you're going to own the gun legally, and if you're going to use it legally, you sh and if you, have no, if you have no criminal history that prevents you from owning a gun, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't be worried about it. You know, you shouldn't be worried about it. So from, from that standpoint, I, I, I'd have absolutely, now I don't personally own a gun, but I'd have, if I wanted to own a gun and I went and applied for one, I'd have absolutely no problem whatsoever if they said, well, Tom, we're, this is going to take a six-month process. Okay, you know, I, I could live with that. Okay. Now, you know, I, I worked for the NFL for a number of years, mm -hmm. for the National Football League for a number of years, and every year that I, and it was a, a part-time position, it was a game day position, just so you understand that. Okay. But every year we had to go through a complete FBI background check. For the NFL? For the NFL. Wow. Every employee of the NFL goes through this FBI background check. Um, at least the ones that are involved on game day, which I was. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with the referees and, um, and uh, I worked with the television people. And let me tell you, for people that, I know people love to say, oh, the game's fixed or this or that or whatever, you know, or, or that was, you know, let me tell you, the FBI does not mess around. <laughs> no. And um, when they, when you know, like me, for me personally, and all, there's the position that I did. There was 32 of us, one for each team in the NFL. Okay, mm -hmm. so there was 32 of us, and all 32 of us, like I said, had to go through this FBI, FBI check every year. And believe me, you, you, again, all 32 of us had, really, you know, in the back of our minds, we really had nothing to worry about. But you never know what the FBI is going to find. <laughs> You, know, you, know, you think about that and you think, what, what, are, how, what are they going to find? You know, are they going to find? Well, they're not going to find anything if you have really nothing to be concerned about. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's something that, like I said, if, if you have nothing to worry about, by all means, if you want to own a gun, own a gun. But if you don't know how to handle a gun, if you don't know how to get the correct permits, uh, permits, I should say, if you don't know how to... Um, sit back and say, okay, I got to wait to legally own a gun because they're going to do some, some serious background checks. Well, then, you know, then maybe you're, you're too much of in a hurry to get that gun, you know. Um, and I know people use them for their own personal protection. I have, again, I have no pro problem with that. I know people hunt with them. Obviously, there's no problem with that. I know there are so many good things that people can do with firearms. Unfortunately, it's the bad things that happen with them, and it's usually the bad people that are that are doing it. It's very rarely are you going to have a, a person that, unfortunately, like this guy the other day who was legally, but he made a mistake. He made a horrible mistake, and now, unfortunately, it may cost him a long time in prison. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you, and, and, and that's the type of thing in that situation where you feel bad for the guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you feel bad for the young lady, she made a horrible decision, and then the guy who wasn't thinking at the time, he just pulled out the gun and started shooting. And um, um, so they both made bad decisions. Now, are those things gonna happen? Yeah, they're gonna happen. You know, a mistake is gonna happen by somebody who legally owns a gun, it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But I take the odds are a lot less that you're gonna make a mistake with a gun if you're legally owning one and you legally know how to use a gun. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I look at that situation. Yeah, in some ways it's really patience. Right. Like, just yeah. maybe sit on it for a little bit. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Okay, so when we were talking, you know, we're talking about guns and social media, just waiting a bit longer. Um, you know, like either between ownership, between making a decision, do I use this, do I not? Um, of course, with protection and legal legal protection, with um, Kenosha the way it is, and we we address guns mostly. But actually, let's let's go to the the social media portion. Okay, we address, we address guns, but not as much with social media. So when you see, you know, social media blowing something out of proportion, what do you what would you recommend, or what would be something that you see as potential solutions, or what do you what do you think could change that? 
Well, you know, it, 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 what happens there is you now you start talking about the First Amendment, okay? Mm -hmm. um, how much of that First Amendment can you get away with on social media um, without creating an issue, okay? Now, the sad part about that is, let's, let's use Facebook probably because they're the biggest social media thing out there, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's obviously where the majority of of um, of the communication comes from okay so if the Facebook people can't sit there and, and they do but they can't sit there and catch every single thing that happens when somebody posts something um, now I'm sure they have filters in their headquarters in California where if a, if a particular um, word comes up or, or a particular um, sentence comes up or whatever, it gets flagged immediately, but it, you, you can't catch it, boom, just like that. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, th that's the sad part about that and how, how that gets stopped or corrected. Um, there's a whole lot smarter people out there in the world than me that's going to be able to figure that one out because as much as I would love to say, okay, shut, shut uh, Facebook down, um, personally, I like Facebook, okay? The mm -hmm. reason I like Facebook is because I keep in touch with a lot of friends, with my two sons and their families. Um, you know, so, um, from, so, so it's got a lot of positives. Um, and, of course, you see the, the negative comments on there, you know, and, and, um, and sometimes they're fun to read. Sometimes they think, oh, brother, you know, and, you know okay. Um, but as long as, they don't, as long as nobody's threatening anybody, I think that would be um, uh, one way if, if, if America could um, somehow or another um, get to a point where you use social media and it's not in a threatening manner. Mm -hmm. that, would, that would help life a whole lot more. You know? um, just because whether you're a conservative or a liberal and you don't agree with one party or the other and um, one party says one thing, the other party says another thing, okay then they can be expected to get some criticism, okay? Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to say, well, just because you said that, I'm going to come after you. you know, that, see, now you're, now you're throwing a threat out there. Yeah. But you can, you can have a, an adult debate uh, whether you agree with it or not. Um, and uh, it would be nice if there was more of that going on instead of, you know, instead of the, non, the constant... Um, you know, way out of way out of line stuff that happens sometimes. So yeah, it's really like civility. You're right. Exactly. Exactly. And I and and personally, I've had my my um, my debates with people that I didn't agree with. I you know I'm you know full transparency here. I'm obviously uh, there's nobody perfect out here in this world. Uh, the only person I knew that was perfect could walk on water. So you know, and I don't know anybody else that can. So um, other than that. Um, you know, I've I've criticized people that I uh, that uh, that from a point not not the person themselves, but the point of view that they may be trying. I've done I've done it, and I've been criticized myself a number of times. So mm -hmm. it, that's fine as long as you can do it in a like you said in a civil ma civil manner. Um, you know, have go at it. You know, so. Um, okay. So with with all that with all that said. Um, so Kenosha now, how do you feel about where Kenosha is at right now? Well, you know, if we go back a year, unfortunately, um, and probably um, go back um, probably 15 months now to the, uh, to the unfortunate George Floyd situation, mm -hmm. um, that, was, that was a disaster. There's no question about it. Um, you know, again, you have... You have Two different sides looking at that in, a, in, a, in different aspects. Okay, now, me personally, um, um, the man died for no reason at all. He should have never died. Okay, um, I can understand maybe the police arresting him, but what they did to him, what uh, what they did to him was uh, was was horrible. Just, I mean, that's the simple way of looking at it. It's just horrible. That, that should have never happened. Now. Um, then a few months later, you get into the Kenosha situation, and um, you know that um, that was that was a sad situation. You know, we we don't know. We know what the what the district attorney said. We also know what the special 
uh, prosecutor that he brought in from Madison. We also know what he said. Uh, we know what the, uh, uh, the statements from both sides of the families are, or, uh, the, the law enforcement, and we also know what the family, or what, what, what the young man said. Um, it's tough, it's tough. You know, uh, you know I, I'm a father of a police officer, so it's, it's tougher for me because he was on that scene that day. Um, and um, um, as soon as I, you know, as soon as it came across my phone what was happening, you know, I contacted him. Now, he was obviously in the middle of this whole mess. Mm -hmm. So I contacted him immediately. He says, Dad, I can't talk now. So uh, he says, I'm okay. You know, I, you know, I wanted to make sure he was okay. And um, he wasn't involved in the shooting, but he was one of the officers that was there uh, w during the aftermath. And... Um, so yeah, it's it's a little nerve wracking. Um, I'm a, a strong supporter of the, of the of the police of law enforcement, mm -hmm. um, and um, and that was before my son became a police officer. I've always I've always been a, a supporter of, of police because I think they do. I mean, police when you think about it, police and firefighters, the jobs that they have to do, um, it's amazing. Uh, you know, your your first responders, whether it be. Uh, what, what the doctors and nurses are going through right now with the with the pandemic, yep. um, they're putting their lives on the line every minute. Um, I I I envy their their courage. I envy their 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 um, uh, the brains that they have to have to do the jobs that they do. But I don't envy the job. <laughs> I don't envy the job. Um, so. It's um, it's a it's it's tough now you know. As far as as far as Kenosha goes, I, I think Kenosha got a little bit more of a bad rap than they probably should have last year with with everything that took place. It was it was it was very sad what happened in the uptown area. It was um, and, and basically in quite a few other spots in Kenosha, but basically the majority of the mess was in the uptown area. Um, you know, we, we found out that um, a lot of this problem came from outside the city limits. Mm -hmm. um, although there was some that were arrested that were city res residents, but most of the problem came from outside. And that's, that, that shed a bad light on Kenosha, because I think Kenosha is a very good city. I'm, I'm proud to say I'm from Kenosha. I was born and raised here. Um, and um, um, I, think it's a, I think it's a very good city. Um, do we have our flaws? Of course we do. You know, you know, just like anybody else, like any other city. Um, but um, there's a lot of positives in this city, um, and um, I think I think um, the two races, uh, if we if we want to get to that discussion, whether it be um, African American and, and and white, or whether it be Hispanic, or whatever the case may be, if we get into all that situation. Like I said, I've, I've been lucky because I grew up with a lot of black friends and I grew up with a lot of, uh, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but a few Hispanic friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, and, and it, was, it was a good, it was good, you know, and, and you hate to see the, um, you hate to see the, 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 the wrong, what's the word I want to look for here, the, the wrong tension between the two um, or, or not two or three or four, whatever factions it may be. Mm -hmm. you, you just don't like to see that. And, um, and it's unfortunate because one will say so-and-so did this wrong and so-and-so did that wrong and maybe they did some of this wrong or maybe they did some of that wrong. But I, I don't believe that Kenosha is on, um, is on the cutting edge of being in a disaster. I think we're, uh, we're, doing, we're doing a lot of good things um, and I think race relations in Kenosha are, and you know, maybe, maybe I'm just being naive, but I think they're a lot better than people give them credit for. I mean, here's a perfect example. Brandon contacted me, okay, mm -hmm. and um, we have a good relationship. I, you know, I'm, like I said, I've known Brandon since he was in high school. And um, uh, so, you know, those are the types of things uh, that, you, um, that you try to see the positives instead of seeing the negatives all the time. So there's, there's, Kenosha's better than most people want to think it is. So we're not, we're not a Chicago, we're not a Milwaukee, 
where they have a lot of issues, mm -hmm. and um, um, but we're stuck right in the middle of the two, which which creates some issues as well because you get factions from both cities and they meet in Kenosha and that doesn't help matters sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, and then unfortunately, you know, you have the you have you know there's drugs and alcohol and whatever the case may be that plays a big part in people's lives and sometimes um, you know I just read in the paper today uh, some guy from Salem or whatever had his seventh OWI he just got arrested I mean how has he not killed himself or anybody else yet you know and that's the sad part about that and thankfully he hasn't but um, so there's 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 social issues yeah. There's social issues, but um, I don't think it's I don't think it's a black and white issue. I think there's I think it's a social issue whether you are black or white doesn't make any difference. Yeah. So, Tom, thank you, thank you so much for that answer. Just you know to close out here, is there any last words you'd like to say? No, um, um, I know I ramble, um, <laughs> and I, I apologize for that, but. Um, uh, um, I think I think Kenosha is heading in the right direction, and uh, with a little bit of a uh, little bit more a little bit more time, we need to get through a year anniversary next month in August. Mm -hmm. I think once we get past that, it'll help things as well. It'll help matters a little bit more. Um, but um, uh, Kenosha is a good city, and I hope people appreciate the city that it is. Well, thank you for your time. You're welcome.